welcome to another one of my front gym videos. We're currently parked at the uh, gate at uh, Toronto Pearson International in uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We're going to be departing shortly for a flight to uh, San Francisco International. And that flight should be around two and a half to three hours long, depending on winds aloft. I've loaded the aircraft with just enough fuel for the uh, flight and uh, we're going to be checking fuel burn on a westward leg. I've already done a fuel burn test uh, flying eastward uh, from Denver International to Toronto. Uh, this uh, video will just go over a uh, flight from Toronto flying westward towards San Francisco, which usually involves a headwind. So it'll be interesting to see how we do on fuel. Let's uh, hop in the cockpit and we'll have a look around. So here we are in the cockpit, and I'm just going to turn the power on right now. The cockpit is uh, cold and dark, and there's nothing to see, so uh, I'll turn on the avionics here and get, get a better look. I want to go over some of the things I've added to this cockpit from its original design. I've added a heads-up display. Uh, we have the uh, Sky Spirit 2010 uh, ground service vehicle utility. We have AI radar, which I'll turn on, and you can see there's uh, some traffic going on in the area here, showing on radar. We also have a pushback and taxi gauge. And for GPS, we have the newer uh, GNS 530 GPS system. In addition to those changes, I've created uh, some custom internal cockpit views. These are my own work, created from scratch. They're photorealistic. We also have some wing views, looking over the right ending and leading edge flaps, looking directly over the right wing, and looking at the trailing edge flaps. We have those same views on the opposite side of the aircraft. We have a view of the uh, cabin area. And if you're sitting in a passenger seat, you get a view of the uh, train ahead as seen from the passenger's perspective, looking at a video display terminal in front of you. And finally, we have a view of the overhead of the cockpit. Now, you can see this is a well-complete package. There's not much missing here. I'm going to get the engines up and running. We got the aircraft loaded with 56,500 pounds of fuel, which, by my estimate, is what we'll need to get to where we're going. Right in Toronto, Pearson International for a flight to San Francisco International. Let's uh, get our aircraft running here. The cockpit dab comes with an auto start feature, which I don't particularly care for, but uh, it does the job other than that. Engine number one is online, and we're just waiting for engine number two now. And then we have engine number two online as well. Both engines are running. So at this point, it looks like we're ready to go. I'm going to contact air traffic control for clearance for our flight plan, and then we'll contact ground for clearance to taxi to the runway. Toronto clearance delivery. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner Gate Heavy. Ready to copy IFR clearance to San Francisco. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy is cleared to San Francisco Airport Nest File. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 5000. Departure frequency is 124.75, squawk 5066. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy cleared at San Francisco Airport Nest File. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 5000. Departure on 124.475. Walk 5066. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy. Read back correct. 
If the car contact ground, I just wanted to explain what I've done here. I've set the altitude as given by air traffic control. My initial climb rate will be uh, 1,500 feet per minute. And I set my auto throttle to 240 knots, which will keep us under the 250 knot limit under 10,000 feet. Over here, I switched over to GPS navigation mode. And on the multifunction display, we have uh, our flight plan showing on the map there. Let's contact ground. Toronto ground, United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy with Mike, ready to taxi IFR. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy, taxi to and hold short of runway 15 left, heading taxiway Niner Whiskey, Delta Romeo, Delta Quebec, Niner Whiskey, Alpha Mike, Alpha, Alpha Golf, Bravo, Juliet. Contact tower on 118.35, one ready. Taxi 2 and hold short, runway 15 left, using taxiway Niner Whiskey, Delta Romeo, Delta Quebec, Niner Whiskey, Alpha Mike, Alpha Alpha Golf, Bravo Juliet, United Uniform, Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy. Hey, so we have all appearances. Before I uh, do a pushback where we can get it, I'd like to uh, have a look around and make sure there's no uh, aircraft in the way. And thanks to these wing views, I'm able to do that. We'll bring up our pushback and taxi gauge, and uh, we're going to do a 30 second pushback with a turn to the right. And that should put us in good position to taxi. Ground cockpit. Go ahead. Ready for pushback. Okay, steering pin inserted. Release brakes. Brakes released. Okay, push it back. I should mention as well, I've, I've set the elevator trim at 1.0. And that's uh, a good initial spot, at least it'll probably require a little bit more trimming after we get airborne. Taxi speed to 15 knots, I'm going to stay at that speed. I should mention as well, I set the uh, time on the simulator to uh, late evening, and uh, the purpose of that is that uh, I've yet to test this cockpit uh, at night, so I'm hoping when we get to our destination in San Francisco, it should be at dusk or, or just uh, after dusk. And that will give me a chance to uh, check the night lighting on the uh, cockpit and make sure it's lighting up properly and everything. While I'm taxiing here, a couple of other changes I made to this cockpit. I've added an extra flaps cage down here that shows uh, both the leading edge flaps as well as the trailing edge flaps. We also, also have an angle of attack cage here, which uh, I use for tuning the flaps and tweaking them for angle of attack. We also have a ground proximity warning system which alerts us to uh, any kind of flight hazards you might be in, such as descending too rapidly or flying too close to the ground, forgetting to put your landing gear down, banking too steeply, those types of things. Great tool to have in any cockpit, I highly recommend it. One thing I am looking to get some feedback on with the um, initial release of this uh, aircraft is the GNS 530 GPS system. It's uh, 
something I, I've taken quite a liking to, and I'm hoping it's going to work on the uh, aircraft I release, as well as it does for me. Coming up to our final turn before the runway here, so I'm going to turn off the uh, taxi gauge and do the rest of this manually. You see how the uh, 2D views come into play when you're making uh, 90 degree turns. It helps you uh, get a sense of the width of the aircraft and you navigate around 90 degree turns without running the risk of the main landing gear going off onto the grass. Short position here. I'm going to contact the tower for permission to take off. Toronto Tower, United Uniform Alpha One Niner Eight Heavy, ready to go. Runway One Five Left, IFR to San Francisco. United Uniform Alpha One Niner Eight Heavy, cleared for takeoff. Runway One Five Left. Cleared for takeoff. Runway One Five Left, United Uniform Alpha One Niner Eight Heavy. Set my flaps at 15 degrees. The wind today in Toronto is uh, 160 degrees at 7 knots. Looks like we're ready to go here. All our pre-flight checklists are complete. I'm, I'm going to engage the auto throttle for takeoff. I got lots of runway here to work with, and uh, I'm only about 580 feet above sea level, so uh, got, got a lot of good thick air up here. We had no trouble get airborne. Engines take, take a little while to spool up, but once they get going, the aircraft picks up speed in a hurry. Passenger rating knots will rotate at around 155 knots. That will vary depending on the amount of fuel you have. A little less fuel, you can rotate sooner. No, very high with this aircraft. We should drop to the horizon. And the main gear just lifts off. Track the gear. Get the autopilot. Watch the angle of attack here. You'll see it dropping down as the aircraft gains speed. And you can actually use this angle of attack gauge as a cue to when to retract the flaps and when to extend them. Uniform Alpha 1 Niner Deep Heavy. Contact Toronto departure on one two four terrain four, terrain five, point one two four point four seven five United Uniform Alpha One Niner Eight Heavy. So angle of attack is under uh, one point oh now. So I'm going to retract the flaps up to five degrees. The angle of attack will increase again as the nose climbs higher. Toronto departure, United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy is climbing to 2,000 for 5,000. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy, Toronto departure, Roger, current altimeter 3007. 
With the exception of final approach and uh, landing, you don't want that angle of attack to be any higher than 3.0. The one exception being on final approach, it tends to get a little bit uh, close to 3.0 and climb a little bit over. Climb and maintain 5,000. Heading 250, resume on navigation. 
Bravo 10,000 feet, now it's all turn off the landing lights. Turn left, heading 250. And we're going to increase our speed on the outer front of the 315 knots. You won't get up to that speed, but it's a good speed to set it to, to ensure that the engines are going to run at full thrust. And uh, 260 knots are track props completely. United Uniform Alpha 198 ME. Contact Toronto Center on 128.275. 128.275 United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy. And the aircraft is uh, gaining speed nicely, uh, climbing at 1800 feet per minute. We're up to 290 knots already and still climbing. Toronto Center, United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy is climbing through 11600 for 12000. Landmark 3312. Contact Cleveland Center on 125.2. United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy Toronto Center, Roger. Altimeter 3003. United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy. Climb to maintain flight level 180. Climb and maintain flight level 180. United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy. Going to 125.2, landmark 3312. So at this point, you really have to do really is uh, keep it on your airspeed as we climb up to cruising altitude. The closer we get to that, uh, the uh, lower the airspeed will get, and we'll end up having to drop our climb rate a little bit to make up the difference. I've set the initial cruising altitude at 28,000 feet. Uh, depending on what the winds are like at that altitude, but I'll make a decision then whether, whether to go higher. Ideally, we want to be up to between 30,000 and 32,000 feet in that ballpark. We do better on fuel at those altitudes. And you're less prone to turbulence. Passing through 15,000 on our way up to 18,000, airspeed 310 knots. Maintaining good airspeed with the uh, primary airspeed. And you can see the angle of back round much lower because we're going faster, the nose is down. We're uh, holding at 1.4. Cessna November 38152 with you. Cessna November 38152, Toronto approach, Roger, altimeter 3003. Right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. 
I see a drop in your offer. I need you to substantial more drop now. Producer Farmer. Rostock approach, Cessna November 67752, with you 7500, Cessna November 67752, Rostock approach, Roger, altimeter 29994. Center United Uniform Alpha 
Mark Point East here, we're under Cruising Street. Take a quick look outside. Aircraft flying at Mach 180, 32,000 feet. You can see the contrail behind it. Nice angle of attack. Aircraft is flying exactly as it could. So I checked and uh, we, we had about 1,865 nautical miles to go before we get to our destination. Obviously, I'm not going to cover all of that, so uh, we'll pick it up when we get within range of San Francisco. We'll talk to you later. Your way at 1506. Traffic is 1 o'clock, 4 miles at 10,500. South of the turbine. United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy. Descend and maintain flight level 260. Airwave 6882. Climb and maintain flight level 290. So I'm using my airfield 240 knots indicated airfield. Descend and maintain flight level 260. United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy. And we'll be descending at 1800 feet from my next. Oakland Center, Landmark 4552 Heavy is out of flight level 338 or flight level 302. Landmark 4552 Heavy, Oakland Center, Roger. One thing I want you to pay close attention to is this angle of attack is because it's very important during approach and landing. It will actually tell you when to apply flaps. And uh, the limit is when it gets about 3.0. Generally that's when you want to apply your next flap setting. As the aircraft slows down, the angle of attack increases. And you don't want that angle of attack to get any higher than 3.0. Once it gets about 3.0, it's time to apply flaps. The one exception to that is when you're on final approach with four flaps extended, the aircraft will be at or maybe just above 3.0. But that's fine, you're on final approach at that point. You want a bit of a nose high attitude anyway. One six eight traffic is ten o'clock four miles one four thousand Cessna caravan support them in sight. Gaia seven two two one traffic is three o'clock four miles one zero thousand two hundred Mooney support them in sight. Gaia seven two two one have the Mooney in sight. We're on a heading of two four zero right now, and uh, the sun is heading out to the west, just to our forward right. Landmark 4552. And you can see the sun reflecting off the uh, right engine and leading against the flaps there. Descend and maintain 16,000. Landmark 4552 heavy. Oakland Center, World Travel 751 with you, 12,000. World Travel 751, Oakland Center, Roger. Current altimeter 2983. World Travel 2751, descend and maintain 5,400. Descend and maintain 5,400. World Travel 2751. And one thing I want to bring to your attention here is the airspeed as it shows you right now. It's showing 246 to 147 knots indicated in airspeed. That's a little bit misleading because we're still at uh, 27,000 feet. The air is very thin up at this altitude. And uh, as a result, we get a false uh, airspeed reading because we have less air flowing over the wings. Reduces the, uh, the reading. When we get into the lower altitudes, down around 15,000 feet, that's when the air starts to become thicker and the air speed becomes more accurate. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner Deep Heavy, descend and maintain 1 2000.
I'm keeping an eye on that angle of attack again, and it's up to 2.5 now. Gradually climbing, but ever so slowly.
just underneath the uh, right window there at the cockpit and just barely make them out. Coming up on 16,000 feet now on our way down to 12,000 feet. Airspeed is 244 knots, indicated airspeed. Angle of attack 2.5. 9,000 pounds of fuel remaining. Burning winds are 120 at 5 knots. Oakland Center, Mooney, November 9, 8720, wind 9,400, landmark 4552, heavy, contact Austin, approach on 123.85. Mooney, November 98720, Oakland Center, Roger. Altimeter 2985. We're under 15,000 feet now, so I'm going to decrease my descent rate to 1,500 feet per minute. Reducing my airspeed on the auto throttle down to 230 knots. That's going to have the effect of uh, both slowing the aircraft down but also increasing my angle of attack. And I should get up to uh, 3.0 or something. Or 2.6 right now. Descend and maintain 3,700. Mooney 168. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner Gate Heavy. Traffic is 4 o'clock, 3 miles, 9,900. Boeing 777, report them inside. One six eight. Contact Sacramento approach on one two seven point four. World travel eight eight four five. Contact Oakland Center on one two one point two five. The triple seven is just for an attack. I can't get real, but I can see my radar. It's just twenty nine hundred feet below me. Out my rear rear. Oakland Center landmark four five five two heavy with you. Landmark four five five two heavy Oakland Center Roger. Current altimeter two nine or eight feet. Landmark 4552 heavy. Descend and maintain 3500. Descend and maintain 3500. Landmark 4552 heavy. Landmark 4552 heavy. Traffic is 9 o'clock, 3 miles, 12300. Boeing 767. Report them in sight. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 heavy. Descend and maintain 3100. Landmark 4552 heavy. Contact Boston. Approach on 123.85. 123.85, landmark 4552, heavy. Descend and maintain 3100. United Uniform Alpha 198, heavy. The G airspeed to drop down to 234 knots indicated airspeed. We were descending through 11,500 on our way down to 3100 feet. Uniform Alpha 198, heavy. Contact Duncan. Approach on 123.85. Going to 123.85. United Uniform Alpha 198 Heavy. A little bit of uh, increased cloud cover over the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, which is not uncommon. Attack is just reached 3.0, which is barely touching it. Wait a little bit longer for that to increase a bit more. Stockton approach, United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy, is at 10,300 for 3,100. Pacifica 5642, Georgia, 6 miles southeast, turn by heading to 6 miles, descend and maintain 2,500 feet. ILS, runway 2 Niner, approach, maintain 2,500 until established on the localizer. Contact Oakland Tower on 124.9er, United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy, Stockton approach, Roger, altimeter 2 Niner 8 6, landmark 4552 Heavy, turn left heading 220, landmark 1519er. Contact Oakland Center on 126.85. United Uniform Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy. Traffic is 4 o'clock, 2 miles at 5,800. Boeing 777. 
mode and once this localizer this line here becomes active I'll uh, reduce my airspeed down to approach speed which in this aircraft is 155 knots indicated airspeed. One thousand. I have eight thousand pounds of fuel remaining, so I have more than enough fuel for a go around. I'm not worried about that. Triple seven is on the ground now, but five hundred. He's got to get it off the runway so that I can come in. I don't think he's going to have time to do that. Four hundred. Landmark four five five two heavy. Three hundred. United uniform. Two hundred. Heavy. Go around. As expected, we got to go around. Kicked out the ILS hold, kicked down the altitude hold. Track the Don't gear. sink. Increase our climb rate. 
targeted uniform Alpha Squad Tracker Shady Patty. Please acknowledge. Going around. United Uniform Alpha Squad Tracker Shady Heavy. Landmark 4552 Heavy. Picture runway when able. United Uniform Alpha One Niner Heavy. Heavy. Contact base approach on 134.5. Landmark 4552 Heavy. Contact ground on 121.8.
San Francisco now heading the uh, northeasterly direction coming up on 12 nautical miles away from the airport. Once we get far enough from the airport, east of the airport if you will, We'll be on a 180 degree turn back to the runway 28 right.
you're shining in a good hot air. about the heads up display on a nighttime approach is uh, it shows a vertical speed uh, normally when you touch down on, on the runway you want to be between uh, minus 100 to set rate and minus 700 to set rate never want to exceed uh, 700 feet per minute on touchdown Clear to land, runway 28 right, United Uniform Alpha 1, Niner 8 Heavy. And obviously I'm going more than 700 feet per minute right now, but uh, once you get down around 200 feet above the ground, I'll uh, disengage the auto throttle and flare the aircraft and that'll reduce my descent rate. 1,000. Proximity warning system kicking in. Cisco Tower, Cessna, November 12560, one miles southeast inbound ILS, runway 28, left approach. Cessna, November 12560, San Francisco Tower, make straight in, runway 28. Crosshairs are almost, almost lined up perfectly here now. Make straight in, runway 28, left, Cessna 560. Five hundred. Turn my spoilers. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. Disengage the auto throttle. Begin flaring the aircraft. Minimums. Reducing my airspeed to idle. 50. My engine's at idle. 40. Say. No zap vertical speed. 30. 20. Minus 300 feet per minute. Main gear down. Nose gears down. Reverse thrusters. Retracting the flaps.
So I set my taxi gauge at 12 knots, a little bit slower than uh, I did when I was taxiing out to the runway on our departure, but things are a little bit uh, more close knit in this airport. Right, taxi are close. Heavy. Hold position, caution, Cessna, sky lane, on final. I'm already committed, so I'm going to have to go across this runway. United Uniformed Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy, continue taxi. Roger, United Uniformed Alpha 1 Niner 8 Heavy. Ground, we can turn off the heads up, heads up display. We don't need that anymore. I've been sold uh, third party scenery for this airport, so it's a little bit more detailed than we can, we'll get with the uh, default scenery. Make my turn a little bit earlier. I have a 737 there. I believe it is up. It's not lit up at all, so I'm scared to see it. Pacifica 5259. 
San Francisco ground. Cessna, November 12560. Taxi to parking. Cessna, November 12560. Taxi to general aviation parking. Via taxiway, November. Charlie. Pacifica 5259er. Hold position. Caution. Boeing 737 on the taxiway. Hold position. Pacifica 5259er. Pacifica 5259er. Continue taxi. Roger, Pacifica 5259. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking. Using taxiway November, Charlie. Cessna November 12560. Aircraft is stopped. Parking brake. Get in the engines. Security aircraft. There we go, the aircraft is now cold and dark, parked at the gate, and that brings this video to a close. Bit of an adventure. Hope you learned something from uh, the video. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. If I can, can't answer them, I'll try to find the answer for you. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the 767-332ER with Brett Wendy Andrews. Have a good day.